So I've been hacking the simulation for the last four or five years, experimenting, you know. And I really don't, I haven't talked about it much. I think I mentioned it once or twice, but people get upset when you say something like that. And you know it's possible because the Bible says you reap what you sow, right? <clears throat> and you also know it's possible because your mind is spirit. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Your mind is spirit. And the reason there's a saying called mind over matter is because mind is spirit, matter is matter. Matter is a subset of spirit. And so hacking the simulation, I'll, 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 I'm, I'm thinking about doing a series if people are interested, you know. If not, I'll just keep it to myself, you know. When Jesus withdrew himself, they had set up a trap, right? They set up a trap, and he withdrew himself to draw. So in order to understand the simulation, you have to understand that you're in a book. You're in a 3D book. It's a virtual reality book, you know. And this 3D simulation is hackable. Now, the problem with hacking the simulation, you've got to make sure your heart's right. Because if your heart is not right, you're going to have a feedback. <laughs> you're going to have a... Uh, You're going to have a problem. <clears throat> to be honest with you, you're already hacking the simulation every day. You just don't know it. Your heart and your mind are outside the simulation. And so what your intention is, your heart, your mind your soul, spirit, whatever you want to call it, they're all connected, right? And so as you look out in front of you, you see a storyline every day. And that storyline, if you pay attention to what you say and to what you think, you'll actually see that the storyline plays out in front of you every day. Now, there's short-term storylines and there's long-term so if every moment is the now, and it is, and so you have an intention of a year later what you want, then you apply that now. You step into that identity from a year, a year from now in the now, and what happens? It has to eventually appear through the cycles. So you step into that identity right now, is pretty much how you hack the simulation. But on a daily basis, you hack the simulation with your thoughts. Now, God is in the ultimate control. God controls everything. God has a calling in your life. But once you find out what your calling is and you step into it, then you're, you're, you're where you need you are where you need to be, you know. And so once you create a system or you step into somebody else's system, whether it's on a job or whether it's whatever you're doing, once you step into a system that's created, while you're in that system, you can set up little subsystems to benefit you. And then what you need, the Bible says God will give you what you need, right? He says, look at the trees or look at the, the lilies of the field and look at the birds. Do they reap? Do they sow? No, but they reap, yes. They don't even sow, but they reap. So if you get up every day and you're sowing a seed, what are you going to do? You're going to reap. These creatures like these squirrels and rabbits, they're just hunter and gatherers. You as a human, you have the ability to sow seed. 
whether it's a farming seed, whether it's reproduction in a marriage, whether it's a product, you have the ability to sow some kind of seed, whether it's a mental seed, a voice, a, a verbal seed. Uh, if, as you improve yourself, as you start to improve your, your core, you're actually sowing a seed for your soul, right? As you, as you learn about narcissism and Jezebel and walking in the Spirit and faith alone, and living in peace and forgiveness and no bitterness and don't let somebody project on you their identity. You get your identity in Christ and Christ alone. As you focus on that goal, whatever that goal is, you're starting to hack the simulation. The simulation is already being hacked by everybody. But the secret is to cut off the noise and not let other people affect your direction. Now, sometimes you can just take a break. And some things, once you set it in place, once you set the, the mindset or the intention or the, the direction, and this thing could have been sown when you were a child. You could have set this direction as a child. And you've sown this pattern for so long that it's not going to change. And all the noise and all the distractions in the world, they might can mess with you. But if it's God's will and you're in, the, in God's will, it's not going to change. Now, the devil's going to attack you and come after you, yes. But he always makes a way of escape. But your intention, intent, the word tent is what? It's the same word as temple. So your body is a temple. And so as the as Israel moved the tents, the temple, which was a tent, they moved the tent around. That's what you're doing with your body. You're moving your tent around. And so as everything starts to coalesce into that goal or whatever you want to say, the universe starts to play the storyline around you to, to make it happen, right? Because he says, be fruitful and multiply. So God gives you free will. You might say, well, is this anti-God or anti bot No, it's not. He gives you free will. He wants you to have intention. Now, it needs to line up with truth. It needs to line up with helping people. It needs to line up with you don't want to get greedy or worship uh, anything but God, knowing that he has set you here for an intention, his intention, and while you're in the storyline every day, if you pay attention to your words and your thoughts, you'll actually see it plays out every day. And you can have short-term uh, goals, short-term short intentions, and uh, just watch it play out. So anyway, hacking the simulation, I'll, I'll give you one example, though, that's a little bit crazy, but it's, it's real because I experimented with it. Let's say you're, let's say you go to the store, let's say you're, it could be at work, you could be, I don't know, wherever, the mall or whatever. Just imagine a bubble around you, an invisibility bubble, and try it for five minutes, you know, try it for, just try it for a couple minutes. Imagine an invisibility bubble around you, because mind is spirit. And see what happens. See if you can't. See if people don't see you. See if somebody. See if you walk right by somebody. And they don't even see you. I'm not saying you're invisible. I'm just saying. That you're writing into the script. Jesus withdrew himself. They came after him to attack him. And they couldn't find him. Experiment. What's it going to do? Now, how's that going to hurt you? If you imagine a bubble around you, an invisibility bubble, how's that going to hurt you? These are experiments with the mind. And like I say, with the, the mind is, you can even experiment with your health. Okay, so let's say you have, uh, 
a weak, let's say your right arm is weak, but you picture in your mind a strong right arm. It could be your left arm. It could be a shoulder problem. It could be an ankle problem or whatever. Imagine that arm strong or that ankle strong. Now, picture it in your mind and watch stuff will show up in Google. Stuff will show up on TV ads to show you how to strengthen that muscle or that joint or whatever in your body. It works with healing. It works with anything. Picture it in your mind because the mind is outside of 3D and watch what happens. I'm trying to, okay, I'll give you an example. So for a while I had a problem with, uh, I was eating late and I had a problem with uh, acid reflux, right? And I was saying, Lord, this is before I knew what I know now. I was thinking, Lord, i got to fix this acid reflux. You know, the doctors want to give you some kind of pill or whatever. So anyway, I was really thinking about it. How do I solve this? How do I solve this? One thing is don't eat after a certain time. But the other thing is instant relief on acid reflux is get you some peanuts and keep them in the house. And as soon as you get acid reflux, eat the peanuts. Or peanut butter. Because it just, it stops the acid from going back the wrong way. You change the sine wave. That solution was revealed to me without me doing the solution. But I imagined finding the solution. Now you can even take it in, uh, one step further. Lord, I have acid reflux, but I am in my mind I'm thinking this problem is solved. And he'll send people your way. Dr. Berg on YouTube. The fact that I'm talking about this, there's probably somebody who has dealt with acid reflux and you don't know how to solve it. Well, I'm telling you how to solve it. Peanuts or peanut butter and don't eat after. Make sure you don't eat two or three or four hours before you go to sleep. Your, your acid reflux has been cured. For real. And so when you really give it to God and you really set your intention and you really start to use your imagination because imagination is, is image birthing. Image, nation, imagination. So when you start to birth with your imagination, you hack the uh, simulation. How to hack the simulation with your thoughts, with your imagination, with your intention. This is not blasphemy. This is not witchcraft. This is not new age. This is just being a saint who has the power of the Holy Spirit to think outside of time. Because time is befallen and you're seated in the heavenlies in Christ. You can heal yourself. You can stop certain patterns. You can break strongholds. You can set new patterns. You can succeed and you can overcome. But you have to cut off the noise and quit letting other people be in your brain. Use your own thoughts. Think your own thoughts. Hacking the simulation, I do it all the time. I can give you some more examples, but those two, I think I just mentioned two. Those two examples... Just experiment with it. See what happens. You'll be like, at first, when you really start to see it, you'll you, you can't you might you'll lose your equilibrium. You'll think, what am I in? Because you're what you do is you're stepping out of, you're actually stepping out of three D, observing three D from the five D, and you're just watching people, and it's like everybody's in a storyline. You're like, you're shaking your head to yourself thinking is this place even real and the answer is not really <laughs> it is but it, it is real but it's not real so how to hack the simulation uh, just use your thoughts control your thoughts because thoughts and words also words the way you speak words are spirit Jesus said the words I speak they're spirit and life your words and your thoughts out of the heart, the mouth speaks. 
In order to speak, you have to think it first. So your heart, your thoughts, and your words, they're all connected. If you control your thoughts and your heart is right, then you're going to reflect back harmony with the universe. You're going to be in tune with the universe, so everything that you reflect back, because your heart's right, your thoughts are right, your words are right, you're in tune, so the universe actually has to follow you because you're seated in the heavenlies in Christ. And so the, the earth groans waiting for the sons of God to appear. So the, the universe, the storyline, it has to follow you. And actually what happens is when you really get into this in a deep way, you'll find that when you control the storyline, other people will actually repeat what you just thought or said. And it's like, it's like, what? I'll talk about that another time, but that's real. People have to follow. Because the reason people have to follow your thoughts is because you've stretched out into the 5D. It's, it's kind of like, okay, because your body's a ship, right? So it's like standing on the front of the ship and hollering back to the to the to the to the captain say, go right, go left, or whatever. And the person driving the ship's listening to you because you're over there on the front and you see way far ahead and the people in the underneath who are in this in the cabin asleep, they're just following you because you're reaching further. You're jutting out and you're seeing further. J U T. And so you're looking further into the 5D. So you're like, it's kind of like uh, in Revelation talks about the horns, you know. So the horn comes off the top of the creature. And it's, it's like if you're in a tower. It's, that's the best way to say it. It's like you're up on a tower, which would represent the 5D. And you're looking out on this, from this tower and you're able to see, and the people down on the ground, not on the tower, they're not able to see what's coming. And so as you as you reach out up into 5D, you're actually affecting 3D. And the 3D creatures have to follow. It's not that you're leading, but you're reaching to 5D, and God is revealing stuff to you. And so when you're in harmony with that, then everything down here has to follow. In your little storyline, I'm not saying you do affect. You do affect. You actually affect the internet. You affect the the news. When you really get into this seriously, you start to affect the uh, storyline on the internet. You start to affect the whole thing. But to stay in that state, it's kind of hard because the cares of this life kind of pull you back to the three D for a while. But if you can stay in that state for a while, you'll start to you'll start to feel like you've lost uh touch with the reality <laughs> because everything's responding to you thought it before it showed up. And everything you're thinking is showing up on the internet, it's showing up at work, it's showing up at at the grocery store. It's, people are just repeating because you stepped you've stepped way out in front of them. You have the foreknowledge or the foresight, and they're just following. Long story short, you can hack the simulation. And uh, if if people want to hear more about the experiments I've done, I'll be glad to talk about it. If not, I, ain't, I won't mention it again because it kind of scares people. But I promise you, 3D is a simulation. You're, why would they say mind over matter? Mind over matter. Why would they say that? Because there's some truth in it. Every, every saying that has lasted the test of time, there's truth in nursery rhymes. There's truth in uh, different kind of sayings, proverbs. Why is a proverb a proverb? Because, and it lasts through the ages because it's a deep truth. And I promise you, you can hack the simulation. I do it every day. And it's not that I do it intentionally every day. I'm just aware of my thoughts and I'm aware of what I needed today 
So if I need something today, there's the answer. It shows up within four hours or less. It's pretty it's pretty cool to be honest with you. At first it's kinda of scary, but it's after you get used to it. It's a new it's a new paradigm. It's like stepping into another reality and uh it's bizarre. It's it's really it's really crazy. The reason I'm telling the reason I'm talking about it is because some people have health problems that they could solve. Change your diet, change your habits, change your patterns, uh, do a fast. People could get healed, you know. If somebody out there is having nerve pain in their hands or their feet, you know, change, get rid of sodas, get rid of sugar, take some, uh, eat food that has alpha lipoic acid in it and get rid of any kind of nerve pain and do some coconut oil, do some MCT oil, and do spinach, you know, superfoods. Just Google the superfoods and eat only the superfoods for about a month, and you'll see a difference. Anyway, hacking the simulation, it's real.